Hey everybody, it's uh, 410 in the afternoon. Today's the 16th of May, 2018, Central Standard Time, Central Daylight Time. Only the federal government would think you'd cut one end off a blanket, sew it on the other end, and have a longer day. Thank you, federal government. Anyway, what shall we talk about today? Well, there's two things that stick out in my mind. One is I owe my brother Jerome from North Tucky Preparedness a video response to something we've been kind of going back and forth on called uh, Amazon Preppers. And if you're not following Jerome, NKY, November Kilo Yankee Preparedness, go follow him. If you like the talks that we have, he has some good talks as well. And and we kind of riff back and forth and, uh, on each other from time to time. So, Amazon prepping is kind of a thing that we've both been talking about, which is the concept that, you know, I call it the box checker mentality, where for whatever reason you feel convicted to get prepared. And then you, st- you know, it doesn't take much to start coming up with lists of things that you should have and everybody's opinions on all the things you should have and how you should do it, what you should buy and how you should spend your money, usually with them. Because as I've said before, and I will say again, and I'm not the only person who said this, preparedness is an industry. Um, Now, I don't begrudge anybody wanting to make a dollar to feed their family or tens of dollars or billions of dollars, I don't care. As long as you're providing a good and useful service but the problem is there's so much bad information out there I mean I'll give you an example at the uh, temporary shop where we are working there is a the family that owns it are Mormons Mormons are generally speaking big into preparedness and there were a thousand boxes of things that had to get moved and one of them piqued my interest because stenciled on the side of the box, it said 30 day emergency kit. Well, I had to check that out. So, you know, I flipped the lid back and I'm looking through it. And this 30 day emergency kit was a cheap, cheap nylon backpack. I wouldn't send my kids to school with their school books in this bag because it would wear out in a week. Cheap nylon backpack with 30 four ounce packets of emergency water 30 emergency rations packets that no lie were stenciled refried beans a very chintzy folding knife and a little fire kit and a couple of mylar blankets you know emergency blankets and somebody bought that and is keeping it for you know SHTF I guess and There's a lot of that out there. People want to sell you their emergency kit. The best kit you can buy, whatever. Some of them are okay, some of them aren't. But people get into this box checking mentality of, okay, you know, first thing I need, a good fixed blade knife. What do I get? I don't care if you buy a Mora Companion for 15 bucks or an SE6 for 250 bucks. I don't care. Have one. Know how to use it. You know, fear the man that only knows one gun for he surely knows it well. I'm kind of that way with knives. I don't care what kind of knife you have as long as it's a quality knife and you know how to use it, how to sharpen it, how to maintain it. And it'll do what you what you need it to do. All right, so you check that box. Then I need a, need a water filter. Then everybody buys the life straw. I wish they didn't, but everybody buys the life straw, right? And they call that, okay. One of these days, I'm going to get better at holding this phone, I promise. Somebody commented I should get one of those dashboard mounts. You know, honestly, this truck is so old uh, that I'm not sure that uh, there'd be enough shock absorption in the dash cam mount to hold the phone without it bouncing around like this all the time. So, anyway. Right, then you get your water filter, you check that box, and you, you get some emergency rations, you check that box, and you put your fire kit together, check that box, and you get your, your poncho and your whoopee, and you check that box, and you, you just keep checking boxes till you got all the stuff. You, 
And a lot of people, right? This is backwards as well. They buy the bug out bag first, the empty bag, and then they start filling it full of stuff. Rather than buying the stuff and then determining what size bag they need to carry all the stuff. Um, and because of that, a lot of people buy very large packs or rucksacks or bags and fill them full of way too much stuff you know, they have four months worth of capabilities for four days worth of bug out. Not necessary. All right, so now they're carrying more weight. But the point of all this is that with that box checker mentality, people buy the stuff, they never use the stuff, and they don't know anything about their gear. They're just checking, checking the box. I have this, therefore I'm good to go on this. It's kind of like per se, the argument that's going on right now, hold on, thirsty, the argument that's going on right now in the state of Oklahoma about constitutional carry, with one side saying the uh, constitution says shall not be infringed, and the other side saying well, yeah, but shouldn't people who are going to carry guns be held to at least some standard of training? I know, T. What do you think? What I think is I believe I'm a constitutional um, purist. The words are the words, right? It's very hard to misinterpret shall not be infringed. That being said, well, should felons have guns? Shall not be infringed. Well, what happens when we have bad guys running around with guns? I honestly feel like if everybody had a gun, if everybody had a gun, we would have far fewer crimes. That's statistically proven out. That's not the point of this video, though. But I'll give you two little anecdotal pieces of information. Safest city in the United States of America, Plano, Texas. Number one city for guns owned per capita in the United States, Plano, Texas. Now you can take those two data points and make whatever correlation you want, but uh, it seems to say if you have a bunch of guns, you don't have very much crime. So anyway, the argument in Oklahoma is, well, does having the equipment, that basically boils down to, does having the equipment constitute a level of proficiency with that equipment no it does not and that's the point of the Amazon prepper thought piece is uh, I don't really care where you buy your gear other than to say if you're gonna give your dollars away try and give them to Americans try to give them to local Americans if you can uh, it's something that in the past I've been good at and bad at and here recently I've been pretty bad at it now I was spending a lot of money on Amazon and not getting out in my community and spending money with real people. Um, and I know there's real people sell stuff on Amazon, I don't, whatever. I'm talking about face-to-face -face connections because that's going to matter if the world ends. The guy from Amazon is not going to come help you hoe a row of pinto beans, but the guy from the surplus store might. Things to think about. So... I'm okay with buying your gear off of Amazon to a degree, but I think you ought to go play with it and break it. I've broken lots of things. I've broken, uh, you know, or I should say I've made fail just through daily use. Knives, fire rods, ferro rods, saws, axes, packs, um, water bottles, water filters, uh, you know, all the things, right? All the things that you're supposed to have with you, I've broken. And because I've broken them, I've had to find better replacements. So if I can break it uh, just out in the woods practicing for SHTF, you don't really want to have that crap with you when the S really hits the fan. Does that make sense? So if you're going to be an Amazon prepper, good on you. Don't care. Just uh, please go use your gear. Please go out and actually do things with your gear. And that's kind of the same thought I believe that Jerome had as well. He came to the same conclusion that 
it doesn't as much matter where you get your gear as long as you make use of it. So, man, there are cops everywhere today. People just have a hard time driving today. So, that's the one thing. The other thing was, I was talking with Hayden last night. We worked till uh, 6.46 p.m. yesterday. And then since we were out on the job, he uh, elected for us to spend our company per diem money at uh, Logan's Roadhouse. So we went to Logan's and I had a burger. He had some ribs. Yes, he eats swine. No, he does not adhere to the way yet, but I'm working on him. And we we're sitting there talking. And I was just, you know, he, he was asking me about different parts of my life. And I was giving him some backstory on me. And he made the comment that it just seems like I've done a lot for somebody of my age. Which I would agree with. And what we landed on as a good reason for why that has happened to me. The blessing of experience that I've had is hey, I've, as I've talked about before, I show up, I'm there, I'm ready and willing, whatever the task is, I'm ready and willing, let's do it. And B, I'm not terribly, terribly concerned about comfort. If something's hard, it doesn't matter, I'll do it. Um, if something is, you know, boring, okay, I'll do it. Whatever needs to get done, we're going to do it, we're going to make it happen. And so... The conclusion that we landed on was uh, you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable so that you can learn where your true limitations are because most people don't really know where their true limitations are. They think they know, but they, they don't really know. Um, you know what you'll tolerate to an extent, but you don't really know what you can withstand. And I'm speaking generally here. I have a pretty good idea of what'll kill me. I have a pretty good idea of what I like to do and what I don't like to do because I've done so much in my short life thus far. Um, you know, I, I'm not, again, I'm not special, right? I don't know everything. I'm, I'm a third of a century old plus a little bit, so. I'm a young man, but I've been working full, full time since I was 15. Okay. I've been working full time for 20 years. So I've just done a lot and I know what I like to do. I know what I don't like to do. I know, I know how much I can take. I've stayed up for three and a half days at a time straight, not even had a nap because I had to get stuff done. Right. And I'm talking about like not chemically enhanced three and a half days either just three and a half days straight uh i slept for 42 hours after that i got up one time to pee but i slept for 42 hours after that right when i used to climb trees you know and i was cutting timber i'd go out and climb trees i would eat lunch in my climbing gear uh never even took it off and i did the math one day i was eating between nine and 12,000 calories a day and was rock solid because I was doing so much work 12 hours a day in the field and then I would come home and especially in the winters I'd be so hot from working outside my blood my body temperature was so raised I was so up that I would cool down outside to, I had a 10 pound splitting mall and I would cool down outside and I would split two cords of firewood by hand while I drank a couple beers just to cool down because I couldn't walk into the house because we always had a, a wood fire going in the, in the winter. Couldn't walk in the house right over heat. And I did that every day, every day, you know, through hay bales in the summer. It's, you know, 98 degrees outside, no breeze, and you're standing there in the middle of a field throwing 90 pound square bales by hand onto uh you know 
hay wagons and then get them in the barn, throw them off the barn onto the stacker conveyor, get them up into the loft and stack them in the loft and, you know, chug a little bit of water and hop back in the wagon, go back out of the field and do it over again. And point being, again, I'm not special. I just know what I can do and I can't do. And I would encourage you guys to get your prepper, your prepper gear from Amazon, throw your rucksack on and go out in the wilderness and figure out just how much you can take as a practice run before it really hits the fan. Cause frankly, I'm concerned about some of y'all, um, being able to hack it. And I don't say that as a judgment against you. I say that out of a concern for you, a genuine concern that, um, you know, I've seen people's comments that I, you know, my pack is so heavy, I can't even move with it. Well, what are you doing then? What's in your pack? Cinder blocks? You know, like I said, a lot of people carry around four months worth of capabilities for four days worth of bug out pointless that being said if you're going to have a rucksack logic would dictate you need to be able to carry that rucksack for at least the distance you're going to be traveling overland on foot so you need to start practicing for that and it would give you a good opportunity to test all that amazon gear you bought that you haven't taken out of the package yet or you've just played with just looked at it at your dining room table but haven't actually used it yet so that's your ear nugget for today. Go forth and do. You can buy your crap on Amazon. I'm cool with that. But go play with it. And go find the edge of your envelope. All right? I'll talk to you all later. Bye.